Hey, Breakthrough Church. We want to welcome in all of our eCampus, our first time guests. Thank you for tuning in to Breakthrough Church Live on today. We're excited to have you. Welcome to the moment that changes everything. I told you Breakthrough Church, I'm gonna be coming at you midweek. Uh, it's Wednesday's Word and we're just excited uh, to be here today. I'm excited to share this word with you. Uh, I believe we started something really great with this prayer series. My goodness, prayer, it's an emergency. I'm telling you, God has birthed something in my spirit. Um, I'm just so excited about it. I'm excited about the power of prayer and what we are seeing happen through our prayers. Uh, for the Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avail much. And we're just excited about prayer. This is our season, church, to connect with prayer, to pray like we've never prayed before, pray like we mean it, uh, get a night life, get an off the chain prayer life, uh, because this is where it's at. The season we're getting ready to walk into, uh, we need to be spiritually prepared uh, for what's coming, what God has for us, uh, so that we can see the blessings of God overtake our life. I'm just really excited to have you. We want to just give a big shout out uh, to our, our first lady, our lady car. We thank God for my girl, all of our staff. We thank God for you. We want to shout out all of our first time guests. Thank you for watching Breakthrough Church Live. We are excited to have you on today. Don't forget right below. I need everybody thumbs up, like, give us a like. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe uh, to the Breakthrough Church uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we want you to be part of our eCampus. Uh, so subscribe right below. Also, leave a comment. Uh, that's right. I know we chat on Sundays in our live stream, uh, but I, I really want us Breakthrough Church to do more comment. Leave a comment. If the word of God blessed you, uh, if it was something that God said during this live stream that blessed you, put it in the comment. Someone needs to know that. You don't realize what bless you may bless somebody else. So just utilize the comment area. Listen, I'm excited to be here on today. Uh, I'm not going to be before you long, but I just want to share this word. I'm telling you, we are in such an amazing season here at Breakthrough Church, and I'm so excited about what God is doing and where God is taking us. Uh, he's taking us somewhere so great. I feel like we're on the verge of something so great, so big, um, and we haven't seen nothing yet. The word says, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man, the things that God has in store for those that love him. And I'm just excited about what God is doing, that things I've never seen, things that I've never heard before, things that I can't even imagine what God is gonna do for Breakthrough Church. So Breakthrough Church, I'm, I'm hope y'all, I hope y'all catching hold to this and I hope you're accepting that challenge, the 90 day challenge, 90 days of prayer. Um, also this month, starting today, Wednesday, every Wednesday in the month of October, we are going to be fasting corporately together. Uh, personally for you, take some time out the day for you, take some time out for your church, for our community, for our nation. Uh, that's right. Every Wednesday in the month of October, join us. We're going to be fasting from sunup to sundown, one meal after 5 p.m. Um, please, if you're fasting and uh, this may be your first time, please get your uh, doctor's advice on fasting. We don't want no one to get sick or nothing. If you're on medication, make sure you talk with your your uh, your doctor, your physician first uh, before starting this fast. But I think, I, I wanna say this, I think we got some mature believers at Breakthrough Church and we've been fasting for quite some time. Fasting is not new to many of us. Um, it's something we've been doing for many years. And um, if you're like me, uh, the more and more I fasted, the more uh, easier fast isn't becoming to me and to my physical body. The more I deny my flesh, the more I feed my spirit, uh, the easier that fasting becomes. I'm spirit. I'm fasting for spiritual breakthrough, and I pray that everyone that's joining us on this fast, uh, that you have a purpose of this fast, that this is the fast that God has chosen for such a time as this. Our nation needs us uh, to fast. Our president needs us to fast. The next leader needs for us to fast. Our city, our community needs for us to fast. Our families need for us to fast. So I'm praying that all of you are partnering with us in this corporate fast during the month of October because I'm expecting to see powerful things happen. I'm expecting and I'm fasting for breakthrough in my own life, in my family, uh, in my finances, in my church, in my community. I'm telling you, Breakthrough Church, God is getting ready to open some doors like we've never seen before. Some things that are getting ready to happen for Breakthrough Church that I'm telling you that uh, is abundantly, exceedingly beyond what we can ask or think. Trust me when I tell you, God is up to something big. And I'm just happy and excited to be part of that, part of what God is doing, part of his plan. I, can I just encourage you right there? 
um, wherever you are in life, you may be going through something, you may be dealing with something heavy, you may be in a crisis, but guess what? God is going to get the glory out of your life. Even in your brokenness, he's going to be glorified. Even in your frustration, he's going to be glorified. Come on, I need a hundred people right there to give God praise for whatever you're going through. Trust me, he's going to be glorified through it. It doesn't matter how you feel. You could be at your weakest point. You can be at your dark in your darkest season. But I'm telling you, God is going to get the glory out of everything that you're going through. So be encouraged. Lift up your head, O ye gates, the everlasting door. Come on, look to the right. He said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. So I encourage you, church, right now in this moment, I dare you just to lift your hands, open your mouth and bless them. Even in your storm, in your battle, in your crisis. Come on, even when you're battling things and you're dealing with things mentally and emotionally, you're trying to get a grip. You may have lost some things uh, in this season, but I come to encourage you that God is going to be glorified through everything that you're going through. He is going to use you for his glory. I'm telling you, that's right. De declare it. Me, God. Use me. Choose me, God, for your glory so that you can be glorified. Every believer that's listening to this, God wants to get the glory out of your life. He wants to be glorified. So listen, don't get caught up in your circumstances. Don't get weary and well-doing. Don't get down. Don't get discouraged. Don't be. Don't, don't let discouragement weigh on you. Don't be disappointed. That's right, because God is going to be glorified. I had to catch hold to myself on this week. I was dealing with something and I felt the spirit of discouragement trying to, trying to creep in, in my mind, Lady Carr's mind. And we, I'm telling you, we went to bed and we woke up and it was just weighing on us. And Lord, we went to our prayer time and had our prayer time. And I'm telling you, God began to move like never before in our prayer time. And that burden was immediately lifted because understand this, the, the enemy is bringing everything he can to discourage us, to cause disappointment in our life. But how many know he's defeated? What God has for you, it's for you. God has not failed you. He has not left you, nor have he forsaken you. So don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged, but be encouraged. That's right. That's right. Be encouraged. Be be encouraged because what God is doing, uh, he is going to be a man of his word. Uh, what he's promised, it, it is yes and amen. That what he spoke in and over your life will not and cannot fail. So right there in that moment, can we just give God the best praise that we can give him? That's right in the middle of everything you're going through. Tell discouragement, it got to go. Tell depression, he got to leave. Come on, that's right. Tell disappointment, not today. That's right. I declare the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's right. And speak that over your life. Do not allow the enemy to attempt to bottle you in, to keep you in bondage in your mind or in your spirit. You have victory and you have liberty through the blood of Jesus Christ. All you got to do is open your mouth and declare it. What you speak shall happen. Uh, he said, if you speak my word, it shall take shape. It will not return void, but it will prosper where you send it. So listen, declare that word over your life right now. Let the devil know he's a liar. Let him know he's defeated. Let him know right now I'm coming out of this better and stronger because I'm determined uh, to bring God glory through my life right there. And I'm just so excited. Amen. We're getting ready to get into this word. Let's pray real quick. Father, we thank you for this moment, this time you bless us to come together to break bread. God, we thank you for the just Wednesday's word, God. We thank you for just sharing a word with us that's going to absolutely change our life. We thank you for the power of prayer. We thank you that prayer still works. God, that prayer can move mountains. We thank you that you hear our prayers. You answer our prayers. Father God, we declare that we are men and women of God that are men and women of prayer. We declare this now in the name of Jesus. Father, bless the word on today. Give us understanding. Give us revelation, God, right now, God. We thank you for strategy, God. We thank you for God's purpose in your word, Father God, that this word will bless our life. In Jesus' name, amen. We left off this weekend with Prayer 101, and I just want to kind of piggyback right on this from Prayer 101 Part 2. That's what we're going to call this, Prayer 101 Part 2. We were looking at Luke chapter 11, and um, uh, Jesus said some cold-blooded stuff to the disciples. Uh, the disciples comes to Jesus with a question, Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. What a what a powerful question. Lord, teach us how to pray. I told you this on last week. Jesus was known uh, for his prayer life. That's right. Jesus, who is the son of God, still had to pray. Uh, how much more do we have to pray? That's right. If Jesus had to spend time with God, if Jesus had to pray, how much more do we need to pray in our lives? How how important do pray, is prayer 
in the life of the believer. If Jesus had to take time to get away, go to the mountain, get rest, rest in the presence of God, pray and seek the Father, how much more uh, is God requiring that of us? Uh, Jesus goes away, he's praying, his disciples see them, see him praying, and, and what intrigues their interest is how he's praying. He's praying as one that intimately knows God. He's praying, he's calling God his father. Um, he, he's saying things that, that the disciples had never heard in prayer before. They never thought that this level of intimacy could be attainable in prayer, but they're hearing Jesus pray this prayer. And when Jesus comes out of prayer, they, they, they immediately rush him with the question, Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. Train us in prayer, God. Uh, show us how we need to pray, God, so we can pray effectively. Basically, what the disciples were saying was, Jesus, teach us how to pray like you're praying. Man, I, I, I want that kind of intimacy with the Father. And I want to be able to connect with God in prayer. And I want to be able to call him Father and Daddy. And, and I want to be able to have this relationship with him that I see that you have in your prayer life. I want that intimacy and that connection. How many listening on today, uh, you have the same cry. I want that intimacy. I want... Uh, uh, that closeness to God, that connection with God. Guess what? You can have it. All you got to do is desire it. All you got to do is seek his face and give him the time that he needs and, 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 and seek after him and, and cry out to God and, and pray like you mean it and, and pray with passion and pray fervently and, and, and make prayer, prayer a priority and uh, make prayer a staple in your life. This is so important for the life of the believer. And the disciples asked this major, major question. Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. And so Jesus, he begins this dialogue. He begins to answer their, their question or their request by saying this, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us and do not lead us in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, this is what I got to give you on this text, because it's important that you understand that Jesus says, when you pray, say, when you pray, say. Now, I got to give you this because I don't want you to get this twisted. And I grew up like this and I often heard people pray this prayer in church often. Uh, they would get up and say, our father in art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And I used to be like, well, maybe that's the way we supposed to pray. And, and I got to give you this clarity on this because really what Jesus is teaching us, he's giving us a model prayer. He's given us a template, a blueprint for prayer. He's teaching us how to come before God. Um, he's not requiring that we literally take that prayer and we pray that prayer. Now we can pray it. It has power. It has meaning. But the deeper principle of this, it is, it has to be practical. Everything that God is teaching us in his word and Jesus and what Jesus teaches us, it's all about practicality. It's about it being practical in our life. Um, we can pray this prayer, but this prayer uh, is only a template. It's only a blueprint that's showing us how to come before God, the things that we need to say in prayer. One of the biggest elements of this prayer is forgiveness. It's asking for forgiveness, but also walking in forgiveness. And we want to really dig into this a little bit on today because this is the most powerful part of this blueprint of this template is the ability to receive forgiveness from God, but understanding that my forgiveness is based on my ability to forgive others. Let me say this. If you have 20, if you only had 24 hours to live, who would you forgive and what would you let go? So the question is this, what would you, who would you forgive and what would you let go if you only had 24 hours left to live? Now, the, the, the sad part in this statement and this question is that many of us will go down the list and we'll think of and we'll say the people that we need to forgive and the things that we need to let go. But the only reason why we're going through this list is because now I just, I put a time limit on it. I said, you got 24 hours to live. Shame on us for holding things. Shame on us for being offended when we should let things go. Shame on us for holding things that we should have let go 10 years ago. Shame on us for asking God for forgiveness on a daily basis, but not being willing to walk in unlimited forgiveness with those that, that sin against us. 
So let me help some of you out. You're in a season where God needs for you to let things go. Let Not only let things go, but who do you need to forgive? Oh, I know you got daddy issues. You got mama issues. You got sister issues. You got brother issues. You got friend issues. Whatever your issues are, granted, we all got them. What do you need to let go right now in, in your life that's going to release you to pray at another level? I learned this about my life that when I was holding on to things and I wasn't willing to forgive others, it hindered and distracted my prayer life. I wasn't able to come to God really transparent. I really wasn't able to come to him naked and not ashamed because I knew in my heart I was still holding things and I was still uh, not forgiving some people and things I was taken to heart and I was offended over things that God had already healed me over. I, I was I, I was in bondage, but the, the prison gate was already open. I was just choosing not to walk out in freedom. How many people right now God has freed you but you are refusing to walk in your freedom. You are refusing to let things go. God says this is the season that your prayer life will never be the prayer life that you want it to be if you don't learn how to forgive and let things go. Jesus, as he unpacks this blueprint, he says, our father, I talked about this last week and my daddy, my goodness, anybody love your daddy on today? I love my daddy. My daddy's always there. He's never missed the game. He's never missed the moment. He has always been there for me. He, matter of fact, he promised me that he would never leave me nor forsake me. My daddy's always there. Whenever I call on him, he's there. Whenever I need him, he is there. I can, I can come in his presence and I can relax and chill with him. I can kick it with him and he's always there. Jesus said this in the text in, in Luke chapter 11. He said, our father in heaven, understanding the authority that Jesus has and God has in our life. Our father, which I hallowed be thy name. My goodness, hallowed be thy name. Your name is great and greatly to be praised. Your name is honorable. There is no other name that men could be saved by, but the name of Jesus. He said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's one of my favorite parts of the blueprint that Jesus gives us is your kingdom come. Do you realize that the, what the, let me say this. Do you realize that you are part of the kingdom and that when you walk in your God given authority and the anointing and the calling and the assignment that God has placed upon your life, when you fulfill your God given purpose, you are the manifestation of the kingdom of God coming. That's right. Kingdom simply means God's way, doing things God's way. Church, get this, all my guests, my e-campus, make sure you get this, write this down. Kingdom simply means doing things God's way. When we talk about kingdom and we talk about it all the time, we're in church, amen, throwing that word around kingdom. We're a kingdom-minded church. Uh, we're a kingdom purpose church. Kingdom means doing things God's way. And the more that we do things God's way is the more that we now cause the kingdom to now be on this earth. We are God's hands. Amen. We are God's feet. We are his voice and his mouthpieces. We have been placed on this earth. That's right. To be the kingdom of God. This is why he said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that his will is good, acceptable, and perfect. We are the kingdom of God manifest him. That when I walk in my God-given purpose, my God-given assignment, that I am fulfilling the kingdom purpose. That's right. Thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That he said this, when he said this to his disciples, matter of fact, he said, who do men say that I am? Who do men? He, he posed this question to the disciples. Now get it. Follow me. The disciples had been with him. The disciples seen the miracles. They seen the power working through Jesus. Jesus asked him this question. Who do men say that I am? They said, some say that you're prophet. Some say you're Isaiah. Some say you're Elijah. And then Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? Out of the 12 disciples, there was only Peter who said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. It was only Peter out of the out of the 12, one out of the 12 that understood who Jesus was. The other 11 did not understand who Jesus was. Are, are, are you getting this? Who do men say that I am? And when Peter responded, thou art the Christ, Jesus followed and said, I behold, I flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, Peter, but by the spirit. Let me say this. 
until you get in the spirit, there are some things that you'll never get because you can't catch it in your flesh. You can only catch it in your spirit. Uh, it is in first Corinthians that, uh, that the apostle Paul says, for this has been given to us. This has been revealed to us, uh, through our spirit, through the Holy spirit. There are some things that you can only catch in the spirit. And the more that you spend time building your spirit, because prayer, uh, is the breath to your spirit. Uh, how do you build your spirit? Uh, by prayer in the spirit. He said, how do you build up your, your, your most holy faith? By praying in the spirit, by developing a praying spirit. I'm talking to 50 people right now who the mandate is on your life to build up your spirit. The reason why you're empty and weak is because you're not building up your spirit. Uh, you're not pouring into your spirit, man. You're, you're carnal, you're fleshly, you're worldly, but God says that the things that I have for you, some things you can only catch in the spirit. This is why you trying to figure things out and, 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 and you're scratching your head and things are frustrating you because you're trying to catch them in your flesh when God is sending them through your spirit. Peter understands this. So Jesus said to him, uh, 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 Simon Barjona, Peter, listen, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but it's by the spirit that you understand who I am. He said, and I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom of of heaven. My goodness, he gave us the keys. He's giving us action. When we understand who he is, our father, when we understand his authority, that's right, that I am I am an heir. I am a joint heir with Jesus Christ. That's right. I am seated, beneath, seated, seated on the right hand side of God with Christ Jesus. When I understand my authority, he said, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom of the heaven. How many got keys that you're using? That's right. Keys that unlock doors, keys that unlock mysteries, keys that unlock revelation, keys that unlock strategy. Get this church, get this. It's Wednesday's word. That's right. Prayer 101 part two. That's right. He said in thy will, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He says, Simon Barjona, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth has already been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth has already been loosed in heaven. How many understand right now kingdom? That's right. God's way of doing things that I have authority. That's right. I have dominion that what I speak, what I declare uh, will take shape. That's right. There is nothing that you cannot speak into existence uh, through the word of God. You have kingdom power. That's right. Kingdom power. You have power to produce. I'm talking to you, Breakthrough Church. This is our season to produce. There's some of us, you've been so empty because you've been relying on your flesh, but it's not about your flesh. It's about your spirit. It's about feeding your spirit, building your spirit, man. And prayer is the life. It's the oxygen to your spirit. If you ain't been praying, that's why you're, that's why you're empty in your spirit. But the more you pray, the more you avail yourself as intercessors, the more you give yourself uh, to your, your, your prayer assignment, the more you seek after the father, the more intimate time you spend with him is the more that your spirit is going to become stronger. Amen. And the spirit as you feed it, amen. It's not, it's not the flesh will now longer have authority over for you. I, I know, I know what you're saying, pastor, but how, how, you know, how do I do this? How, 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 my flesh seems like it's stronger. If your flesh seems, seems like it's stronger, it's because your flesh is what you're feeding. Uh, who's going to have the, who's going to be the strongest, your spirit or your flesh? It's the one you feed the most. But if you're not feeding your spirit, the word of God, prayer, the things that you need to build up your spirit, then guess what? Your flesh is always going to win. I don't know about you, but I need about a hundred people who says, pastor, I'm tired of my flesh winning. I'm tired of my flesh getting in the way of my destiny. I'm tired of my flesh uh, causing me to forfeit the bless blessings that God has for my life. No longer will I allow my flesh to win, but I declare I'm going to feed my spirit. I'm going to build my spirit man up so I can be the man, the woman, the, the, the man of God that God has called me to be. Who am I talking to? That's right. Kingdom. Tell him I'm a kingdom man. I'm a kingdom woman. I do things God's way. And the more that I do things God's way is the more that the kingdom shall come and the kingdom will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. My goodness, how many know through your spirit you have access to the kingdom of God? Through the way you live, you have access to the kingdom of God. When you represent God on this earth and you do things God's way, my goodness, it gives you access. You have access to heaven. I'm living under an open heaven. How many declare that right now? I'm living under an open heaven, not because I'm so chosen, not because I'm so smart, but because I am using the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That's right. I'm activating. I'm, 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 I'm walking in the power of prayer. That's right. I'm building my spirit. That's right. I'm, I'm choosing to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of my flesh. My goodness is this good on today. Prayer uh, 101 part two. He said on earth as it is in heaven, give us day by day our daily bread, everything we need on a daily basis. Matter of fact, the apostle Paul says that we have all things pertaining to life and godliness, that everything that we need to live this life that God has called us to live, we have it. Uh, he said, and forgive us our sins. I wanted to plug this in because understand this, God's ability to forgive you is determined by your ability to forgive others. I told you, if you had 24 hours, who would you forgive? What would you let go right now? See, you don't need to wait until you get to that point where you only got 24 hours to live. You don't need to wait till you get to that place to have deathbed confessions. My goodness, but you need to live a life now where your heart is free, where you have let things go, where you have forgiven those so that you can receive the full benefits of God's forgiveness. Matter of fact, he said he is faithful and he he is just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. My goodness, I'm, I, I believe there's about a hundred of us that need to hear this. You've been holding on to this thing because you've been waiting for your repayment. That's right. I know I know what we say when people do things to us. We sit around and we hold it because we say they owe us something. I know we play that victim. They owe us something, pastor. They owe me something. They never even apologize. Listen, let me tell you, give, give yourself the gift of forgiveness. That's right. They may never apologize, but free yourself. Forgiveness is not about that person. Forgiveness is about freeing you. That's right. It's not about getting, letting them off the hook, but it's about freeing yourself from the bondage. That's right. The bondage of unforgiveness. I don't want nothing holding my heart. I don't want nothing uh, lingering in my heart, keeping me and contaminating my spirit because I refuse to let things go because I think somebody owed me. The truth is they did me wrong, but I got to let them go. I got to free myself and I got to forgive them. The truth is, I know they did you dirty. The truth is they talked about you. The truth is they left you when they should have been there for you. I get it. The truth is they did you wrong. But in this moment right now, you can't wait till you get to your deathbed confession. You can't wait until you only got 24 hours to let it go. But you need to free yourself right now. God says the prison door has just been opened. All you got to do is walk in your freedom. All you got to do right now in this moment is says, Lord, I thank you for forgiven me. And I thank you for allowing me to forgive them. I walk in unlimited forgiveness. I want to forgive them with no conditions, no stipulations, no fine print. If they never say sorry, I'm going to be all right with it, God. If they never make it right, if they never acknowledge it, God, they're wrong. I'm going to be all right. God, I choose to forgive them right now in this moment. Lord, free my heart. That's right, God. I declare it now in the name of Jesus. I let it go. I let it out of my spirit. That's right. Who am I talking to. This is so powerful on today. My goodness. Uh, uh, somebody say, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. My goodness. Let it go in this season. Let it go. It is your season to let things go so that God can now, you can walk in your healing. You can walk so God uh, can heal those broken places in your life. There are many of you that God's healing is already ready to come into your life, but you refuse to receive it because you like staying in the prison cell of unforgiveness. God says, let it go. Let the offense go. I know they did it. I know they did it out of spite. I know you can be revengeful. I know you feel like retaliating, but let all that go. Resist revenge and walk in unlimited forgiveness. My goodness, I believe, I believe, I believe a hundred people needed to hear that word on today uh, about forgiveness. I, I want to share this. I want to sow this, this word as well, uh, because there are certain things that impact our spirit, our soul, and our, 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 our minds, uh, our mind, body, our soul. When we talk about the triune being, the mind, body, and soul, uh, God, he placed this in my spirit on this week. I was praying and and God began to deal with me about soul ties. Um, and he began to tell me about soul ties and that there's many things that many of us were going through. Why our spirit is struggling to be built um, and to mature um, and to be equipped is because there have been certain things that have impacted 
our soul more than our spirit. Um, one of them is sex. Sex is one of those things that impact us. And I want to talk to my singles for a minute, not just my single, but I, I sometimes even our married couples, you need to hear this because sometimes we are in a relationship, we're married, but the truth is there are still certain things that impact our soul, certain relationships that we were in in the past that we have not flushed out of our spirit. There are still soul ties that's impacting our soul and our spirit and our ability to love our spouse. I, I want to plug this in for some couples right now because some, I've, I've, I'm telling you, me and Lady Carp, we have counseled so many couples and a lot of couples are struggling with intimacy and struggling with that emotional um, and physical connection. And, and what I found is that for many of us, we're struggling with soul ties, things that have impacted our soul and our spirit uh, that we have not let go, that we have not broken the ties to. Um, not just This is not just for my singles, but this is also for my couples as well. There are certain things that come into our life uh, that impact our soul more than our spirit. Sex is one of them. Whoever you sleep with gets you in your soul, not just in your spirit. Uh, that's why when you see someone you slept with, you both feel a little funny. Uh, don't don't get it twisted. Don't act like you so deep and you so super saving. You say, Pastor, that don't happen. I'm over that. For some of you, you're not over it. And the truth is, you're over it because you don't see them. But the minute you see them, there's something that triggers into your soul uh, that's still connected to them. I, I want to teach on this because I'm telling you, this is where the power of prayer kicks into our life. Because in order for us to get in position to really start praying, uh, thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, there are some things that we have got to pray out of us. There are some there are some strongholds that we have got to use the power of prayer to deliver us. Before you get on your little phone and your little chat and your little live Facebook live and you want to teach and you want to preach and you want to do all this, you first have to get your healing. Uh, you can't teach from brokenness. Uh, let me help some of you out. Uh, I know some of you think that you're God's gift and you want to run around like little Jesus and the little savior and you want to save everybody and you want to give everybody the advice. But the truth is you're still broken. You're a broken vessel. You have not been healed in certain areas of your life. You have not dealt with soul ties that have been hitting in your soul. Things that have been still connected to you and still that affect your life today. Uh, but yet you're trying to teach. You're trying to get on Facebook live. You're trying to have classes when truth is you have not walked in your liberty yet as as of today. You are not truly free as you need to be. And I wanted to plug this in because what I've learned in my life, and I got to make this personal, um, I was trying to get places in my life spiritually, but I was hitting, I was hitting these, these roadblocks. I was hitting these areas because God needed for me to confront things. What is it that's in your soul? that you need to confront on today? What is it that you've been de that you've been denying, that you've been ignoring, that you've been pushing under the rug that you really need to deal with in your life that's keeping you back, that's holding you back from the next level in your prayer life and your next level spiritually? Because for many of us, we should be further along. We, we should be more mature. We should be in that place with God where we understand that where God is giving us understanding and revelation and strategy uh, that we should be able to, in a place where we can teach others, where we can help others, but we're not. Why is that? Why? Because we run into roadblocks that we don't want to confront. Uh, what is it that you need to confront that's going to release you into another level of living uh, where you can pray freely? See, I've learned this about prayer. I remember those seasons of my life where I was trying to pray and I was trying to push my way through prayer. And at times I faked it. At times uh, I said things that weren't true about my own self. I was praying things that I had not yet caught in my spirit that I had not got an understanding of. And also there was things that I wasn't willing to confront. So there was areas of prayer that I couldn't even touch because I wasn't really ready to confront those areas and those issues in my life, those struggles in my life. I'm helping 10 people on today that God says in order for you to now take your prayer life to the next level, there are things that you have to confront in your life. There are soul ties. Let me give you this about soul ties. Soul tie is this. It is an unseen control on a person's life that can powerfully pull them away from the place of peace that God desires for all his children. An ungodly soul tie produces irrational thinking. Irrational means capable, uh, not capable of reasoning. Reason, having lost mental clarity. Amen? This is what a soul tie is. Illogical. You ever been around people that it doesn't matter what you say, you just seem like you can't get through to them? 
You're saying all the right thing, but they don't want to hear nothing you're saying because they are stuck on the notion. They are stuck on their way of thinking and they cannot get through. Understand this irrational thinking. There are many people in the body of Christ that you're an irrational thinker. Why? Because there are soul ties and things that are still connected to you. And let me say this. I know I plugged it in with my singles about sex, but it's not always sex that creates soul ties. Relationships, just relationships by itself create soul ties. Uh, uh, also, catastrophic events can create a soul tie. Uh, things that we go through, the absence of a loved one, uh, the abuse that we've we've experienced, whether it be physical, sexual abuse, mental abuse, can create soul ties. I've seen people uh, that are connected to their abuser. My goodness, this is good on today. Connected to their abuser still have a connection to the person that hurt them the most. Why? Because they have not realized that this soul tie needs to be broken. My goodness, this is some good teaching on today. Uh, don't forget, subscribe, like, share, comment. Uh, let me give you this. An ungodly soul tie causes a person to evaluate themselves and others according to previous context. They can't see outside of that relationship or mental paradigm. An ungodly soul tie causes a person to shut down emotionally. I, I plug this into my couples all the time. If your spouse is continually to shut down emotionally, there is probably evidence of a soul tie there. And let me help some couples out right now. Those that are struggling say, Pastor, I needed to hear this word on today because I've been wondering why my husband doesn't love me the way he needs to love me. Why aren't we affectionate? Why aren't we physically attracted? And why our intimacy have not taken off to the next level, whether it's your husband or your spouse? or your wife, uh, it can go both ways. It's not always the man uh, who has soul ties, but also women have soul ties. Uh, if you're saying that, it's because there is probably a soul tie. They have not gotten out of their soul the connections to past relationships. And not just past relationships. I've learned this in my own life, men. Let me plug this in. Sometimes we can have a soul tie to struggles. One of them being sexual addiction, masturbation, and pornography. We can have a soul tie with this stuff. All these things things and images that we've allowed through the gates of our eyes into our heart and into our spirit into our soul create soul time and it creates an inability for you to connect with your spouse that's right i'm freeing some of you you need to declare by the power and the blood of jesus that every soul tie that has been connected to my life is being dismantled now by the blood of jesus that i am breaking free from every soul tie mentally emotionally and physically so that I can love my spouse the way that they need to be loved. Let me help some singles out. For many of you singles, you need to break the soul tie so that you can love yourself the way that you need to be loved. The reason why you can't love yourself is because there is a soul tie who keeps telling you you need this person in your life to feel good about yourself. You need this person to love you in order for you to feel love. But I come to tell you right now, as Jesus taught us, you have a daddy who loves you. Right now, you got to declare by the blood of Jesus, that every soul tie that is impacting my life, that is that is distracting my prayer life, that is keeping me from being who God has called me to be, I declare is being dismantled now. I declare every soul tie and every demonic attachment is being broken up off of my life now in the name of Jesus. Some of us got soul ties to depression, uh, to symptoms. There is a soul tie. You just got to be sick. You got to have something going on with you all the time. There has to be something. You need you need attention. You need sympathy. That's a soul tie to depression. That's right. I'm plugging this in. Mental soul tie. Emotional soul tie. God is here to free us from every soul tie. My goodness, this is good. An ungodly soul tie produces an unhealthy, unnatural desire or attraction to people, places, and things, even to, per to a person's detriment. An ungodly soul tie will cause a lack of judgment and discernment. That's right. This is why some of you in your mind, you're all over the place. You're, you're, you're irrational in your thinking because why? This soul tie uh, is, 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 is blocking your ability to discern the things of God. The enemy wants you to focus on these negative things. He wants you to focus on being the victim instead of being the victor. Who am I helping out right now? Somebody ought to declare, my season of being the victim is over. I know it happened to you. It was wrong to you. I know they physically abused. They sexually abused you. They mentally abused you. Uh, they verbally abused you. But you ought to declare right now in this season that my God is too big for me to stay in bondage. My God has freed me from the prison of my past. And my goodness, I'm coming out. 
I declare now in the name of Jesus that I'm going to be free to live, free to live the life that God has called me to live. Let me give you this. This is important. An ungodly soul tie produces the inability to establish and maintain proper adult relationships. This is good because I got to plug this in. There's so many people in the body of Christ. You don't know how to keep a, a relationship strong. You don't know how to develop proper relationships, even with people that you're not in an intimate relation, but you can't even build a practical, simple relationship because of ungodly soul ties. This is what ungod ungodly soul tie produces, the inability to establish and maintain proper relationships. Pastor, what do you mean? I mean this, when the minute you get into a relationship with somebody, I'm just talking about friendship. It's going well, but when something happens or they say something or they don't agree with you or things don't go your way, you're ready to break off that relationship. Why? Because that that habit and those that those those habits and that behavior is connected to an ungodly soul tie. That's what you've been doing. When things don't go your way, you break free of it. You walk away from it. You abandon. See, some of us, we got abandonment issues. We learn, we, we, we know, and we have learned how to abandon things. When things are not going the way we want it, when things require more for us than what we feel that we can give, when things require a change from us, we abandon it. Who am I talking to right now? You need to free yourself from the spirit of abandonment and the spirit of sabotage, because that's what it is. It is a spirit. For some of us, we know how to mess up everything good. Why? Because there is a spirit of sabotage that is in our life that we need to break an ungodly soul tie with. Stop letting yourself, your inner you, the enemy within you, mess up everything good that God is doing in your life. This is why some of you can't stay in a relationship because you mess it up all the time. Because the minute that things are going good, there is something that triggers in you that says, this is too good. Wait, something bad has got to happen. And you begin to do things and you begin to now uh, uh, release behavior that begins to sabotage everything good that God is doing in your life. My goodness, this is so good on today. I wish I had some more time. Somebody say prayer 101. This is so powerful. Uh, let me tell all my singles this. Please listen to me. No matter who you date, don't sleep with them. That's right. Don't sleep with them. Don't don't give them the treasure. That's right. Not before marriage. Uh, call, re, re, require marriage first, singles. Let me plug that in, my singles. Don't sleep with them because every time you sleep with them and every person you sleep with creates now an ungodly soul tie. That's why God's plan is that you be intimate with one person in your life. Soul ties can be broken, but it makes an impact on your life. Blended families. Talk about blended families. How, how much of a soul tie is there for all of my blended families? All my blended families, you need to get into prayer just to break the soul ties of past relationships, not just within yourself as husband and wife, but also in your kids. Because when you have kids out of wedlock, kids in other marriages or with other people, those children now have the spirits of that, of that seed, that generation, that family, that now you're blending it all together. And if you're not spiritually in tune and you're not walking in discernment, you won't even understand and understand that there's an ungodly soul tie that is working against your family and the growth of your family. So who am I talking to right now? My goodness, this is the power of prayer. This is where God is taking us to the next level of our prayer life. Uh, understand this, the gate to the soul is also the imagination. Imagining that you're with somebody. That's right. That's another gate that's opening. Uh, be careful what you're imagining, what you allow in your mind. Uh, he said this, be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renew, ask God to renew your mind. Don't let, don't let the thoughts in your mind keep you prisoner to the things of your past. And don't let the thoughts of, in your mind keep you from the blessings that God has for your life because your thought life is not honoring God. Oh, this is going to help many of us. Uh, the reason why your spirit is off because your prayer life is off. Lack of prayer quenches your spirit. When, when your spirit is quenched, you don't get the benefits that the spirit need like discernment. Uh, come on. I, who am I talking to? I said this on last week. How many want to have an off the chain prayer life? That's right. Off the hook, off the chain prayer life. I'm determined, Breakthrough Church, that we're going to be an off the chain church as it relates to prayer. And I'm going to have an off the chain prayer life. My goodness, this is so good on today. Uh, um, Galatians 5, chapter 5, we're going to put it on the screen. Verses 22 and 23, he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is the evidence of the Spirit living us. It's the byproduct. It's the evidence. When you plant an apple seed, uh, what you expect to see on that apple tree is apples. 
apples is the byproduct of the seed that was sown. The fruit of the spirit in Galatians chapter five is the byproduct of the spirit living in us and, and consuming us. It's, it's not the question, do you have the Holy Spirit? If the question is, does the Holy Spirit have you? Have you allowed the Holy Spirit to permeate every area of your life? Have you allowed the Spirit to move through the corridors of your mind and the hallways of your heart? Who am I helping out on this? This is your season where you have, allowed, you have got to allow the Holy Spirit to take residence in your life. Uh, I, I said this, the reason your spirit is off is because your prayer life is off. When your prayer life is off, your spirit is off. My goodness, for some of us, we've been trying to figure out with the people we live with. Why are they so off? Because their prayer life is off. And when your prayer life is off, why is my marriage off? Because my marriage, my marital prayer life is off. That's right. Get your prayer life on track. You're going to get your spirit on track. My goodness, is this good? Galatians says, love, joy, peace, self-control. Talks about the fruit of the spirit. And when I'm I'm not praying like I need to. I'm not producing any fruit. I want to produce the fruit. Amen. Jesus says they shall know you by your fruit, by your fruit, by what you produce. I don't care how spiritual you think you are. I don't care that you can quote 10 scriptures, that you know the Old Testament. I don't care that you have a degree, that you went to seminary. If you do not have fruit, if you're for, if you are not producing fruit, then there is no evidence that the spirit is living in you. That's right. This fruit of the spirit is the evidence that the spirit is living in us. My goodness, is this good? I told you this earlier. There is some stuff that God wants to reveal to you, but he can only reveal it to you through the spirit. And if you're not feeding your spirit, if you're not building your spirit, then how does God reveal to you the things that he needs to? Uh, get this revelation. Get this revelation. Uh, 1 Corinthians, I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. I'm going to put it on the screen. Uh, it's says this for God, for to us, God has revealed them to us by the spirit. How powerful is this? Uh, there's reason why I didn't receive some stuff was because some stuff my eyes and my ears can't get. They, my, 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 my natural senses can't understand. Some stuff is too heavy for my body to receive. Understand this. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man, the things that God has in store for us. What does he mean by this? He means some stuff you ain't going to See, you ain't going to hear. Men ain't going to know about it. People ain't going to know about it. It's a revelation that's only going to come through the spirit. There is some stuff that can only be caught, not taught. My goodness. Uh, de degrees can't reveal it to you. Only the spirit can. Even the most intelligent person in the world can understand, can, cannot understand the, the things of the spirit if the Holy Spirit doesn't reveal it to them. How powerful is this? The spirit is powerful. My goodness. And the more that we can feed our spirit is the more that God can give us revelation and understanding. I don't know about you, but that's my desire on today. Like, Lord, help me to build my spirit so you can now reveal some things so I can catch some things in my spirit. For many of you, this is so important for the spirit of discernment, revelation, understanding, wisdom, and strategy in your life. You're not going to catch it through your five senses. That's right. You're not going to catch it through your intelligence, but you're going to catch it through the spirit of God. For, it says this, for to us, God has revealed them to us by the Spirit. My goodness, I pray on today, Breakthrough Church and my eCampus and all of those that have tuned in, all of our guests, our first-time guests, we thank you for tuning in to Breakthrough Church Live. Welcome to the moment that changes everything. We're so excited about this word. I pray that this word has absolutely blessed your life. Uh, I pray that it has changed the trajectory of your life. I'm telling you this word, I'm so fired up with this word. I'm just trying to stay calm on today because uh, Breakthrough Church, you know when I get excited, I get crazy. Uh, I start talking a mile a minute because I'm excited about the word and I'm just, I'm trying to maintain myself, but my goodness, I just feel such a shift in the kingdom of God. I feel such a shift in Breakthrough Church that God is, I'm telling you, the next 90 days I said it, and I hope that everyone has accepted the 90 day challenge of fasting and praying over the next 90 days. We're going to have specific times that we're going to be fasting this month and the month of October. Don't forget every Wednesday, sun up to sundown, one meal after five. That's right. Uh, uh, we're going to be fasting for spiritual breakthrough that we are in a season that God is going to reveal them to us 
through the spirit and we're so excited about it. Uh, if this word has blessed you, uh, I want you to sow a seed. That's right. I need every believer, every person who's watching this, this live stream, this Wednesday's word, I, I need you to sow a $25 seed. That's right. The ways to give her up on the screen right now. I need you to partner with us, sow into this word, sow into this anointing, because trust me, it is changing our lives. We needed to hear this word. This was good food. This was manna. I'm telling you, this was bread from heaven on today. And there was a word that we needed to hear. So right now, every seed sower, I need you to sow some seed uh, into good ground. Breakthrough Church, that's right, into the word of God. If this word has blessed your life, I need you to sow a $25 seed right now. The ways to give are right there on the screen. I want to thank you in advance for your support, supporting the vision, supporting the word of God, supporting Breakthrough Church. All of my faithful givers, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to say this. I'm going to be coming at you every Wednesday in the month of October. Uh, what really sparked up something on last week, last week's word, when God began to uh, talk to me and allow me to speak uh, and be his mouthpiece as it relates to honor. So I'm going to be starting a, a Wednesday series on honor, uh, the gift and the benefit of honoring God, honoring the people that are in our life, honoring our leaders, honoring your boss. I know your boss may not even do things right, but God still requires you to honor him. And sometimes that's the challenge. How do you honor people that are not doing thing in a, things in a godly way? How do you honor people that are doing things wrong? God still requires us to honor them. I know it's tough. I know it's a challenge. Trust me. There's some people I want to cuss out, but God is requiring me to honor them. And so I'm going to be unpacking this word over the next few Wednesdays. You don't want to miss Wednesday's word. Oh, in the month of October, I'm going to be teaching on honor. I also want to teach about uh, the restoration. That's right. The restoration of honor in the house of God. The truth is many of us, we have lost honor for God's house, for God's people, for God's leader. I want to bring restoration to that. I, I want to really teach on this because I believe this. This is the hour where God is requiring us to honor his house, honor church. When we're in church, honoring it. That's right. Get off your cell phone. Uh, stop being occupied by other things that's distracting your attention from God. You're in God's house. My goodness, how much honor is God due in God's house? So we're going to really unpack this over the next Wednesday, honoring your leaders, your spiritual leaders, those that pour into you every week, who give you word, who, who speak and, and are used as God's mouthpiece to speak into your life, who deal with issues that you need to hear about, who preach the truth of God's word. Are you honoring them? That's right. Are you honoring them at that level of obedience? Sometimes our biggest honor is obedience. Um, so we're really going to be unpacking this over the next few weeks. I don't want to dig into it much on today, but I'm excited about it. So you're not, you don't want to miss uh, in the month of October, every Wednesday, Wednesday's word is going to bless you. I'm also really excited. I'm starting a brand new series this weekend, uh, this Sunday called Expectations. That's right. Expecting the great. Uh, how important it's for us to have expectations in this season. We're so excited. Excited. Um, I'm expecting great things from God and I'm going to really unpack this word uh, through the word of God to give us a clear understanding of what expectations. Expectations have so much to do with our faith. It says this, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. F expectations is something so similar to our faith. It's having the ability to believe beyond what we see. So I don't know about you, Breakthrough Church. We are in a season where we are we are expecting. We are expecting. It's already done in the spirit and we're expecting God to move like never before. Breakthrough Church, I love you. I thank God for you. As always, me and Lady Carr, we love you, Breakthrough Church. All of our e-campus, thank you. All of our first time guests. Let's close out in prayer really quick. Father, we thank you for this word on today. We thank you for blessing our life with such a powerful and impactful word. We needed to hear this word on today. Holy Spirit, let this word resonate in our hearts. Holy Spirit, teach us this word. Help us to download this word, digest this word, and to live out this word now. We thank you for helping us to build our spirit, God, by praying in the spirit. We thank you for a deeper prayer life, God, more intimacy with you, Lord. We declare and we believe it's done. We receive this and we declare every soul tie is broken right now in the name of Jesus. Every ungodly soul tie, every ungodly connection is being broken up off of our life now in our heart, in our soul, in our spirit, in our mind. We declare it's done by the power and the blood of Jesus. Amen. We thank God for you. Listen, Breakthrough Church, don't forget, give $25 seed. We thank God for you. We'll see you this weekend on our live stream. God bless. Have an amazing week.